Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, Taylor, my name is Ben. It's, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ben. Yeah, wh where in the world are you calling from? I'm from British Columbia, and I'm in Kelowna right now. Okay, very nice, very nice. So you're, you're probably staying a little cooler than we are in New York, then. We're going through some sort of heat wave right now. Oh, it's like 109 outside. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, so you can relate. You can relate. I have the AC blasting in back, so we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but I'm in bathing suit bottoms right now. And a suit. All right. <laughs> it, it's a secret safe with me. Safe <laughs> with me. Um, well, congratulations on season two of this awesome series. I, I know that you just kind of pulled in the premiere last week. You've been with this character for two years now. Um, what's been the most gratifying part of playing her? I feel like you must have so much fun. I mean, it's, it's honestly been more like three years considering the pilot when I first yeah. met 2018. So... It's been an ongoing process, but um, interestingly enough, um, I've learned a lot from her and she, we seem to grow in, in parallel to each other, which has been something because really I haven't been able to spend this much time with, with one character and one headspace right. mindset and, um, and, you know, her individual happenings. So it's been really interesting from an actor's perspective to be able to explore uh, just the dynamics of her and, and what makes her human. Because, you know, even just through a film, you see one little facet of mm -hmm. what the character is going through and it may be just like a few moments in their life and, uh, and how it changes their perspective or, or their, um, their, so it's just like, it's pretty profound to be able to spend this much time with, with one person. And she certainly feels like an extension of myself. And, back into season two after a pandemic was interesting it was a loaded gun for sure and um trying to reconnect with her um considering we left off like a, a year and a bit before since the last time i had been in her shoes mm -hmm. was really interesting because yeah we stopped shooting i think mm -hmm. <laughs> be back with her until like a year a year yeah. later that's a long break. I mean, you always have breaks between seasons, but obviously the, the world had other things in mind. It was a little longer than usual. Yeah, it's also uh, you know, season two of a show that I've been on. Like, this is my third television series that I've done, and it's the first time that uh, I've gotten a season two, so third time's the charm. Yeah. Yeah, it really, it's really interesting to be able to further perspective, but I, I haven't had that opportunity before. And, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. What, what, what did you find yourself doing between the seasons? How did you kind of keep uh, the creative juices flowing when you weren't, you didn't have the opportunity to play this character? A lot of music. Um, mm -hmm. I, the screenplay, which I, I, I didn't know that's what it was when I began writing it. Um, there's a book I've, I've read that uh, Jessica, who plays Tally on Leatherland, recommended to me. It's called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And in comparison, that's the that's the, probably the closest thing I've experienced to to big magic, other than um, you know when you really connect with someone in a in a scene. But mm -hmm. um, arts you know, so fleeting to have that kind of creativity that just grabs you, and I just felt this like innate need to sit down and write something. I just I had so much bottled about the last year, and I sat down and wrote a screenplay. <laughs> I wrote a poetry book, and um, I. I the screenplay, I didn't stop writing for like five days straight, like 12, 16 hours a day. Wow. Wedding and <laughs> couldn't see straight. And um, I had like probably sores on my butt from never leaving. <laughs> right. We all had sores on our butt from watching TV. So it sounds like you were being productive about it. That's yeah. <laughs> so much time in the woods too. So yeah. like, I camped probably every weekend and really explored my home. And I found it was the safest way to find a uh, connection to myself and, you know, my, my family uh, in a time where affection physically and emotionally was really lacking and we all felt really isolated. Um, so I really took the time to just get outside and enjoy my own company and um, you know, leave without being around other people. It was like a safe, the <laughs> only safe yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And what, what a blessing, too, because I, I know that you have such a rich history yourself in music. So you're, you're kind of used to being able to just 
pick something up and like have that creative artistic expression when things like the industry of it all isn't necessarily feeding it. You know what I mean? Exactly. So I, I'm definitely always juggling something. Uh, I, I'm, I'm working on, still in the works, it's, it's been for a few years now, but I wrote, um, I wrote an LP, I wrote an album, and it's all in demos right now, but I'm just trying to find the, the right team or people to, to make it really come to life the way that I envision it. So <laughs> if anyone watching has any recommendations, you know, you can put them in my DMs. <laughs> That's what we're here for, yeah. Um, T tell us a bit about, um, could, my understanding is that the way you got into acting specifically was kind of uh, a roundabout means of doing it. You you were doing music for a while and then you just met a casting director and you were signed and it kind of went from there. Like, did, were you pursuing it actively or is it just kind of something that happened organically? Yeah, the way I stepped into this industry was not uh, organic or conventional. It was really quite <laughs> interesting. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was working on music. Um, I graduated a year early so that I could pursue uh, a career in music and uh, spending my summers like busking in the in the parks in Kelowna and on the streets for money and playing shows with my dad. My dad's a wicked guitarist and we play shows together. And um, what's it called? Um, my aunt, Leah Karens, who, uh, who's with the same agency as myself, um, she Facebook message. She was like, Hey, I know you did theater when you were younger and you're really artistic. What do you think of acting? I was like, well, the only reason I did theater was just so I could also get up on stage to sing. Like it wasn't acting thing. Wasn't really my favorite. And I, sure. I needed so much attention when I was younger that my mom had tried to put me through auditions for like my little pony commercials and I think I went about eight times and she had to bribe me with McDonald's to go every time because it was a <laughs> four hour trip to and from Vancouver to these auditions. Mm -hmm. That died off. And I just never really thought about it or like, I, I guess hadn't explored it enough to really drive that in, in that field. And so she was like, well, I, there's this new uh, agent uh, at our, <laughs> at our company and he's he's looking for like teenagers for his roster. And I was like, oh, and she was like, yeah. And I showed him your picture and uh, he likes your look. And I was just like, oh, she's like, yeah, she, he thinks you look really interesting. I was like, what does that, what does that mean? Like that's such a backhanded compliment. She's like, no, 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 he just wants to meet you. And I was like, well, I never come to Vancouver. And she said, okay, well, if you ever do give me a call. And I was kind of like, oh, okay. But I found out that weekend, my sister was going down to uh, Vancouver for a soccer tournament. Left it all down. And yeah. Like, Here, I want you to cold read this this scene with me. And uh, I think I was like 16, turning 17 at the time. And the, the scene was something to do with like a, a writing with her mom. And I was like, this shit is easy. You know, I do this all, all day long. <laughs> acting for me. So I went in and I, uh, I read it with him. And uh, I was like, okay, thank you. And I wanted to leave. And he was like, well, hold on, hold on a second. Like, I want to sign you. And I was like, okay, well, like, how much does it cost? And he was like, no, that's fraud. Like, I get paid when you get paid. The, the trick is you have to drive all the way out here for every audition. And so I committed to doing that until I, until I booked. And wow. it, something about being on set just grabbed every fiber of my being. And I just had this wanted it so badly and even though everyone was warning me from it distracting me from music um, I think I found a healthy balance to juggle I always find that music waits for you someone told me that once and... yeah I like that music waits for you and that, then with something like Fort Salem I feel like that the world that it's in is so elevated and must be so fun to kind of have that uh, fantasy space to play within um, what's that like for you compared to some of the more uh, like hum human driven, grounded in reality kind of stories. Do you enjoy working in the genre space as an actor? I do, um, because I always find a way or attempt to find a way to connect the two. I want it to feel realistic, you know, as much as I want the viewers to be taken out of their, their space in their head, because I feel like that's the point of a film and television is to sort of escape and, and relate and connect and feel. And that's, that's essentially what art is. Mm -hmm. and so I bring that grounded approach even even in really dystopian sci-fi genres and um yeah, 
I, I really work with the character and I, I, I allowed myself to learn from them and transform my perspective. And a lot of what you see on screen is just like, I always, I always bring my own truth to it. And um, it's always very honest. Like uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a Sagittarius, I'm a terrible liar. Like I can't lie to say I'm the worst. So, you know, a lot of what, everything of what you see is just like, it's myself. I find it very therapeutic and it's a way to um, express myself and connect with people, which to me is the point of living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is that a pretty, um, I mean, when it comes to the actual building of a character, the, the, the process of it, um, our backstage audience today are kind of the working actors and the creators of the world. I'm, I'm curious if there is like a, you say that it's you that you're bringing to the table. Is it a conscious effort of finding similarities between you and Rael or you and any other character that you're playing? And like, I'm going to focus on this and mm -hmm. bring that to the screen. It is like a process. You yeah. Sit yeah. You always want to work to find similarities that I, I find. I feel like that really helps you connect and relate. You know, even, even if you're playing someone like a villain, no one thinks they're the bad guy. Everyone's acting what they think is just. No one wants to be bad to be bad. These people are hurt or they're working to feed families or mm -hmm. they're, you know, there's, no one is a bad guy in their own mind. They're just, you know, living like us and making mistakes no matter to what extreme. And um, it's taught me a lot of patience with other people, I'd say. And, you know, it's taught me a lot about compassion just because I've, I've gotten a little equal into other minds. I'd say it was a lot more um, black and white before I started acting. Mm -hmm having to justify behavioral traits that I don't personally have in myself, I think was something that helped me connect with other people and perhaps develop or create relationships with people that I might not have, because I now have a better understanding of them and the way that they tick. And I think the thing about acting is just the psychology behind it. Mm -hmm. um, you want to eventually go to school for psych and, and sociology and whatnot, just because it's so fascinating to me. I grew up watching like serial killer documentaries and just, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's taught me a lot about other people. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel like any, any good role is going to be forcing you to flex your, your muscles and empathy for sure. Yeah. Okay figure out how to get into that other psyche. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, as, as a final question for you, then um, kind, kind of just looking at the trajectory that you've had over the last few years, you seem to have such a good head on your shoulders about it all. And you want more to do You're you're working on an album, you're looking down the line to other projects. Um, what's a piece of advice that you would give someone who wants to get started in the industry, someone who's a little earlier on in their days on screen or on stage? Um, what would have been helpful to you when you were first getting your start? Keep good people around you, stay humble. Um, but people that you meet on the way up are the same people that will be there on the way down. And they're going down, so remember that. And I'd say, know your rights. Know that you can say no. If you feel unsafe, you have that power. Mm -hmm. Only you can protect yourself. And I know it might seem like there are a lot of other people looking out for you, for your everyone, but truly your And that's not a cynic. I'm a very naive, optimistic person, naturally. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd say just, you know, yourself, trust your gut, um, trust the people around you. Acting is so much about intuition, and you won't have it. You have to trust it, and um, yeah. Like, awesome. Yeah, Noah, I, I think those are some great words of wisdom to leave this on. Um, Taylor, it's been great to get to know you a little bit. Congrats on season two. And uh, thanks for sharing your time with us. Thank you so much, Ben. All right. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.